Hello anime fans, this is Trixie the Golden Witch and you're watching the first of 24 videos that I'll be releasing on this channel we watch anime every other week for the next year. You can see each of these videos a week early if you back me for $1 on back.buy, $7 on Substack, or $5 on Patreon. And everyone who gives $5 on BackBuy, 7 on Substack, or 10 on Patreon has their name here at the front of every video going forward. If your name is on screen, you contributed more to this video's ability to exist than everybody else who watched it combined, so I cannot thank you enough. Anyways, this is Heroic Antagonists in Anime. Most of the time, the main character of a story, the one that we follow over the course of the story, is the protagonist, the character who is driving the action in the story, and also the hero, the person whose qualities earn our admiration such that we want to see them succeed in the story. Now obviously there's plenty of shows that start off with the hero making some kind of mistake, which must be repented for over the rest of the show, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. There's lots of heroes that make complex moral decisions and be considered anti-heroes, and there are some shows that exist in a moral gray area where none of the characters can really be called a hero or a villain, and there are some shows that just flat out focus on awful people. Recently there's been a trend of centering shows around characters who traditionally would fulfill the role of villain, but showing them in a new light for their heroic qualities. Oftentimes these shows reveal the traditional heroes to be more so villainous, or end up teaming heroes and villains together in the name of fighting bigger villains. And in the in the unique case of Jujutsu Kaisen, the hero and the villain are trapped in the same body and forced on one another's existence. But none of these are the type of shows that I'm talking about in this video. This is about the occasional show in which the protagonist is just straight up the villain of the story and the antagonist is the hero. The most obvious example is one of the most famous anime ever created, Death Note. Light Yagami starts off as a kind of Punisher-esque anti-hero but quickly transgresses more moral lines into villain territory in order to play judge, jury, and executioner to anyone he considers criminal until the world is cleaned. His cat and mouse game against justice-obsessed genius detective L forms the main draw of the series. Its most memorable scenes hinging on how close the two would get, supposedly working together to take down Kira and becoming fake best friends, all while L is mostly convinced that Light is Kira and just needs evidence, and Light is desperately searching for L's real name so he can write it in his notebook that kills people if you can write down their real name in it. Heroic detectives have a long history as anime antagonists, especially in shows which feature criminal protagonists. Lupin the Third, for instance, is a gigantic franchise about a charismatic thief and his gang of cohorts, constantly being hounded by the intrepid inspector Zenigata. While Zenigata is treated as an overly self-serious oaf and constantly goofed on by Lupin, the series often pays a sort of respect to Zenigata's work ethic and lets the audience root for him, even if he rarely scrapes out any kind of win. Lupin himself isn't exactly a villain, and treads the line between likable and obnoxious depending on which episode of which series you're watching, but as much as you may want to see him succeed, Lupin usually is in it for himself, and ultimately screws over a bunch of people, especially the heroic Zenigata, who really doesn't do anything wrong most of the time and is often the most reasonable person around and shown to be a better cop than any of the other police, the only one who even would be able to keep up with Lupin. Even lighter in its handling of hero-villain relations is Cat's Eye, which focuses on a trio of acrobatic sisters who are attempting to recollect all of their late father's stolen artwork, which had been collected by Nazis at some point and then sold off all over the place. And of course, one of these girls just happens to be dating the police inspector that gets assigned to solving their case. Now while these three girls can hardly be called villains, and the show certainly wants us to root for them, much of the tension in the series comes from the lovability of the relationship between Hitomi and Toshio, and the absolute need to avoid cluing Toshio in to the true identity of Cat's Eye, whom he thinks is just one burglar. And even still, he's such an earnestly determined detective that even Hitomi can't help but kind of support him while she's subverting him at every turn. Finding this show on a late night anime crush channel, by the way, is not only what inspired this video, uh, but this entire series of videos that I'll be putting out for the next year. Just, that's that's all I'm going to have to say about Cat's Eye in any of these videos, but that's the spark. That's how we got here. 
Berserk's protagonist, Guts, could be taken as a hero or a villain, depending on how you look at him, and certainly exists within what is mostly a morally bankrupt universe. But his relationship to the main series villain Griffith is a definitional aspect of the story's intrigue. Griffith could also have been taken as either a hero or a villain from the very start, depending on your perspective, but his role from the perspective of Guts and from the perspective of society shifts over the course of the story. When they meet, Guts is antagonized by Griffith, who is treated like a hero by the people around him. As Guts travels with this guy, he starts to see in him what everyone else does and fights with him, even committing atrocities in Griffith's name, and he helps him to be recognized as a hero in the eyes of society. However, when Guts decides to move on and do his own thing, Griffith starts making more selfish decisions, first causing society to see him as a villain, and then eventually causing Guts to hate him forever when he, well, I won't spoil the eclipse scene from Berserk and in case you're watching this video for recommendations, but there's a very good reason that the series starts with a flash forward of Guts cursing Griffith's name. When you get far enough into the manga, you start to see how Griffith starts winning back the reputation of a hero in the eyes of society, having used the power that he gained from his immense sacrifices in order to make the world a better place, and leaving him as an antagonist now only really to Guts, and Guts in the position to potentially be endangering society by eliminating this unforgivable hero, Griffith. Gankutsuo, the Count of Monte Cristo, is fascinating in that the hero is the villain and the antagonist, but not the protagonist. In this sci-fi retelling of the classic novel The Count of Monte Cristo, what was originally presented as a heroic revenge story about a man who returns from 15 years of wrongful imprisonment to ruin the lives of everyone who took his away, is instead seen from the perspective of his stolen fiancé's son, who at once admires, fears, and ultimately unravels the plot of the Count. And the Count drives this story so much that he could almost be called both the protagonist and the antagonist, with main character Albert mostly filling the role of victim with a, a dash of heroism. I realize this isn't nearly as much of a heroic antagonist as the ones that I've talked about so far, given that the series does present the Count unmistakably as a villain by the end, but I think his origins as a tragic hero deserve mention in this category. In sports anime, almost every villain is more likely some kind of tragic hero. Sometimes the main characters are pitted against some real assholes, but in almost every sports anime I can think of, from boxing classic Hajime no Ippo, to volleyball fan favorite Haikyuu, to the terrific tennis serial Baby Steps, and even the electrifying Ping Pong, there are plenty of characters that feel just as heroic as the main character does, and probably earn just as much of the audience's respect, even if we're rooting against them to win because the main character is just that little bit even more of a big damn hero. This kind of trends into no one is really the villain territory, but usually that conversation is saved for shows where no one is really a hero either. It's rare that a cited violent conflict can be presented in a way which preserves the heroism of nearly all of the characters involved. But the Nanoha franchise has been dedicated to realizing that reality. Seriously, they do a great job of doing the whole war story thing without managing somehow to sully any of the characters in a way that they, they're not just uh, lovable and great. Tentai Senshi Sunred is a little known comedy series with a unique slant on the idea of a heroic antagonist, in that its supposedly heroic protagonist is actually a terrible person, and he's foiling the plots of a would-be villain who, in practice, is actually just the nicest guy in the world when he's not trying to conquer it. Comedy follows. And that's the last one I could think of. I'm surprised to realize how few anime I actually know of in which the antagonist can be considered even arguably the hero of the story, regardless of how villainous the protagonist might be. If you know any other examples or you intend to check out the shows that I talked about in this video, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe and ring the bell for more of my content and never forget, anime forever.